As fans of the show are aware, Edward Jellico, played by Ronnie Cox, became captain of Enterprise D in the Chain of Command episode of Star Trek The Next Generation. What did Cox have to say in defense of the contentious actions of his character? Also, during an interview on The Graham Norton Show, George Takei, who played Ikaru Sulu in Star Trek, has sworn not to talk about William Shatner again. Keep watching for details. Firstly, Zoe Saldana explains how Star Trek and MCU fan bases compare. Zoe Saldana has contrasted the fan bases of Star Trek and the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Saldana joined the MCU as Gamora and Star Trek as Uhura, appearing in each of the main film and television series. At the end of the year, she will reprise her role as Neytiri in the first Avatar sequel, Avatar The Way of Water, for another of her prominent series roles. Saldana discussed how there are distinctions between the two fan bases, particularly with Star Treks. During an interview on First We Feast Hot Ones, she believes that because the Star Trek franchise has been passed down through many generations, from its beginning in the 1960s to its current film and television productions, it's taken more seriously by Star Trek fans than it is by MCU supporters, as they all grew up watching one particular generation of the Star Trek universe. Family members of various ages can come together and enjoy the same work of media. In essence, Zoe Saldana, 44, said that there are differences and Trekkies are great. She also stated that she believes they take it much more seriously. People just hold a really unique place in their hearts for it, in her opinion, because it married the kind of world they wanted to see at the time in the 1960s. She then stated that it's extremely lovely to see a grandfather, a father, and a son, or a grandma, a mother, and a daughter all getting together to enjoy this. Star Trek fans may be the most devoted in Hollywood. Despite the MCU having its own share of ardent supporters, the Star Wars fandom, for instance, is famously difficult to satisfy with the franchise's most recent releases, and opinions about how Disney is now handling the Skywalker saga and its numerous spin-offs are frequently polarized. Despite the mixed reviews some of the Star Trek movies and TV shows have received, the fan base has stayed loyal. Everyone who watches Star Trek has a strong connection to the universe Gene Roddenberry established. Whether they watch the original 1965 TV series starring William Shatner and Leonard Nimoy, or the current iterations Star Trek Discovery, Star Trek Picard, or Star Trek Strange New Worlds. Throughout the years, Star Trek has changed and modernized itself numerous times, with J.J. Abrams' 2009 reboot being the most major upgrade to fit a more modern look through its action set pieces and reinterpretation of famous characters. And even when the series underwent significant modifications, or despite the fact that Star Trek Into Darkness was essentially a carbon copy of Star Trek II, The Wrath of Khan, the fan base has consistently persisted with the series. A modernized version of Star Trek will be introduced to subsequent generations, and this could serve as a gateway for the initiated to revisit and watch the franchise's earlier motion pictures and television programs. As Saldana points out, one of the most distinctive fan bases in Hollywood history is created by the generational nature of Star Trek. Every generation adores Star Trek in at least one incarnation, and likes the artists and performers who helped it remain popular. It's one of the reasons why the Star Trek cast is constantly appreciative of the viewers and their devotion to a series that transcends four generations. Saldana's return to the Star Trek franchise as Uhura is presently unknown, but considering that Matt Shackman, who directed Star Trek IV before taking on Marvel's Fantastic Four, left the project, it seems probable that she'd be more than delighted to reprise her role if given a chance. What did Ronnie Cox say in defense of his Star Trek character's contentious actions? In the Star Trek universe of the future, there is no longer any hunger, want, or need for material items. However, a lot of people continue to make distressing choices, particularly Starfleet captains. The virtues of Sisko tricking the Romulans into the Dominion conflict, Kirk seeking vengeance against a blood-sucking space cloud, and Janeway, well, let's just say fixing Star Trek fans frequently discuss Tuvix. It's difficult to surpass Captain Edward Jellico, who assumed command of the Enterprise D in the iconic Star Trek The Next Generation two-parter Chain of Command, based on the screen time ratio to contentious choices. In Chain of Command Parts 1 and 2, the 10th and 11th episodes of the 6th season of Next Generation, Captain Picard, Lieutenant Worf, and Dr. Crusher are sent by Starfleet on a covert mission in Cardassian space, and Starfleet names Jellico the new captain of the Enterprise in Picard's absence. Jellico's direct manner irritates the crew right away, especially Commander Riker, and the animosity persists even after the Cardassians kidnap Picard. But as Jellicoe makes his long-awaited comeback, his actor Ronnie Cox has defended the fleeting Enterprise captain in an interview with Trek Movie on his portrayal of the current Admiral Jellicoe on Star Trek Prodigy. Cox felt that his character enhanced the Enterprise in numerous ways. Cox claimed that if one goes back and looks at what he did, he achieved a tremendous number of things there. Cox specifically refers to the infamous directive from Next Generation creator Gene Roddenberry that developed characters will not 
experience internal strife. Cox argues that this robbed them drastically of character conflict, and they were able to implement that when Jellico came in. He said that his sort of conflict with Riker thus added a new layer to the program. That might not be exactly true, although almost everyone agrees that Roddenberry's rule hindered the first season of Next Generation. It was gone by the time Chain of Command aired in Season 6. Even in Season 2, there were many scenes where Starfleet officials fought, most notably in The Measure of a Man. Cox also reminded readers that despite Jellicoe's my way or the highway attitude, his choices improved life for the regulars in the series. Perhaps the most prominent was his order for Counselor Troy to change out of the skin-tight bodysuits she had been donning into a regular Starfleet outfit. According to him, Jellicoe gets a bunch of beef and pork for making her wear a uniform, but Troy star Marina Sirtis requested it, and she received a lot more stuff after that. Cox justified Jellicoe's decision to take the fish tank belonging to Picard out of the Enterprise Ready Room as well. Cox claims that Patrick Stewart always detested the fish in the prep room. Stewart argued that individuals who upheld the dignity of all species in the universe would preserve fish they had caught on board, but the producers enjoyed the artistic flourish it gave the production. Cox said Jellico did that for Patrick when he told them to take the fish out of the preparation room. Jellico resumed his contentious behavior before he appeared in the recent Prodigy episode, Masquerade, for the first time since Chain of Command. One of Jellico's first acts as Admiral was reportedly excluding the Zebulon sisters from Starfleet vessels, according to Star Trek Lower Decks. George Takei promises not to bring up his Star Trek co-star, William Shatner, ever again, as their verbal battle continues. George Takei is referred to his former Star Trek co-star, William Shatner, as a cantankerous old man and pledged never to bring him up again. In the enduring science fiction series, Takei played Hikaru Sulu and Shatner played Captain Kirk. However, their conflict dates back to their time together on the Starship Enterprise, and last month, Shatner said that Takei and other Star Trek performers who had criticized him were bitter in a statement to the Times. Shatner stated that George has never stopped tarnishing his reputation in a speech to promote his book, Boldly Go, Reflections on a Life of Awe and Wonder. He said that these people are angry and resentful. Takei had already retaliated during an interview on The Graham Norton Show when he was discussing the West End musical George Takei's Allegiance, which is focused on his childhood experience of incarceration during World War II. The 85-year-old asked if it was true that he and Shatner did not get along by saying that the host was the last chat show host to be permitted to ask that subject, as it's grown so tedious to talk about. George Takei said William Shatner claims that people are exploiting him when he needs publicity for a book he wants to sell. He then said that his topic is deeper and more significant, and he won't bring up Shatner, who he called a cantankerous old man any longer. He then swore that it would be the last time he mentioned him. That brings us to the end of this video. What do you think about Ronnie Cox's defense of his Star Trek character? What's your opinion about the feud between William Shatner and George Takei? Let us know in the comment section. Please give the video a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.